Shalom, shalom. Oh, bless you. Do y'all hear me well? Can everybody hear me? Bless you. Deacon, are we good on the recording? All right. Am I good to go, Deacon? Thank you. All right, bless y'all. So I don't want to um, be too long because there's a lot I want to share with everyone. Um, basically about nutrition and how it can affect a woman during um, trying to conceive, during pregnancy, and afterwards while breastfeeding. Um, after I speak, um, I would, uh, Sister Gabby's going to speak on um, a follow-up of why the nutrition is so important and some of the things that can take place negatively if you don't stay on top of this. And then also Carolina, um, she should be up here sometime as well to speak on um, another factor of it as well. So we're hoping to take questions afterwards. So um, if everybody, if anybody has questions during the class, if you just go ahead and write it down and then you can ask after we speak. All right, so today we're talking about nutrition, uh, especially for pre-pregnancy, pregnancy, postpartum, and lactating. Disclaimer, I am not a nutritionist, I am not a specialist, I am not a doctor, I am not an expert. I simply have been passionate in the learning of various different nutrients that the body needs and the importance of each one of them throughout my years and seasons of pre-pregnancy, pregnancy, postpartum, and lactating. My goals for today is to share with my sisters the various different macro and micronutrients we need as women during every season of our life, before pregnancy, during pregnancy, and after pregnancy while nursing. I also want to share the function and the importance of these various different nutrients, as well as some of the different food sources that these nutrients can be obtained by. All right, so there's many different diets that people go off of, and I'm not here to advocate for one diet or the other. Um, so there's, because there's many different things that people do, whether it's um, vegetarian, carnivore, paleo, blood type, et cetera, the list goes on. But no matter what you're doing, the main thing is to ensure that you are still obtaining all of the macro and micronutrients that your body needs and the amounts that your body needs them in, especially while pregnant and nursing. So one way that you can gauge if you're getting all the nutrients in with the diet that you have chosen to follow is um, if you uh, download a food app. And this isn't something you have to do for the rest of your life, but if you're wanting to see how your um, food intake is, and if it's giving you all the nutrients that you need, if you get a food app, um, I go off of one named Chronometer, or I used to, you can put in what you eat on a daily basis, um, everything, breakfast, supper, snack, lunch, and then you can see if that, if that type of eating, of that way of eating is giving you all the macros and micronutrients that you need and the amounts that you need them in. Um, once I did it for a few weeks, then I got a gauge of it, and I no longer needed to use it. But it'll help give you an understanding of how your eating is affecting you or what it's giving to you. Before I go into the nutrients, I just wanted to emphasize water because water is a very key part of your consumption. Um, the general function of water, it hydrates your organs, including your brain. It aids in elimination through urine and of stool. It aids in liver and kidney functions. It helps in regulating blood sugar and promotes healthy skin. Those are just some things. Water is very important and sometimes we don't drink enough of it. And sometimes a lot of the issues that we're dealing with health-wise sometimes can just be resolved with drinking more water. Sometimes we're not drinking enough water. People need about half an ounce to an ounce of water per pound of their body weight, the more when you're pregnant and nursing. Before pregnancy, Water promotes healthy amounts of cervical mucus necessary for conception. So it's very important to stay hydrated when you're trying to conceive because it'll help for your cervical mucus to be more, um, more fertile and allows the sperm to travel easier to get to the egg. During pregnancy, it helps form amniotic fluid and helps nutrients circulate in the blood. And for postpartum and during breastfeeding, it's important to remember that your breast milk is 80 to 90% water. So if you're having a hard time producing enough milk, sometimes you're just dehydrated and you're not drinking enough water because your water is 80 to 90% water. Or did I say that right? Your breast milk is 80 to 90% water. All right, so we're gonna jump right into the macronutrients. 
So the macronutrients are, the three main macronutrients are proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. When you think proteins, think body's building blocks. They help build and repair. And this is something very important to remember because when you're growing a baby inside of your belly or a baby is nursing from you, um, they are growing. So it's like when you're pregnant, you're building a baby inside of you. So protein is very important. Carbohydrates is, the body's, uh, is one of the body's fuel source. It's a main energy source. Fats, long-term energy reserve. Sa uh, think satiety, cell health, and nutrient absorption. Then you have your micronutrients, which are your vitamins and minerals. So some of your vitamins are vitamin A, C, D, E, K1 and 2, all your B vitamins. Your micronutrients minerals are, um, some of them are calcium, phosphorus, magnesium, sodium, potassium, chloride, sulfur, iron, manganese, copper, iodine, zinc, cobalt, selenium, chromium, molybdenum. Them, yeah. you, can read it. you can read it up there. I don't know how to say that one. All right, so now we're going to go on and explain the different functions of these macro and micronutrients. So you saw your macronutrients, which are your proteins, carbs, and fats. Those are um, what you need an abundance of. And then you also have your micronutrients, which are your, all your vitamins and minerals. So that's something to keep in mind as we now explain the function of these macro and micronutrients. All right, protein its general function. Dietary proteins provide the body with building blocks called amino acids. They are needed to help build and repair tissues, muscles, and bones. Protein help the body create enzymes and hormones and also provide structure to your body's cell membranes, organs, hair, skin, and nails. So imagine if you weren't consuming enough protein, all of these things would be negatively affected. Before pregnancy, you need an adequate amount of protein because it's important for your hormonal health. They support hormonal balance, which is key for conceiving. If you saw my other class, you see how much hormones plays a key in fertility. And if you missed that class, I do, um, Elder Mitchell has it on YouTube. It's a reproductive, um, reproductive health class, I believe it's called, but it's on his page, but it explains in more detail the importance of fertility and hormones. Um, proteins also aid in stabilizing blood sugar levels and supporting reproductive tissues, both which affect your reproductive health. Proteins also support the production of healthy eggs and sperm. During pregnancy, now this is probably going to be the most lengthy out of all the macronutrients because it is so important during pregnancy that you eat enough protein. Protein during pregnancy, you need more protein than before you were pregnant and your protein requirements increase throughout your pregnancy. So um, you'll need more protein in your second trimester than in your first, and then more protein in your third trimester than in your second. And you're gonna need more overall than before you got pregnant. Protein is like the building material for, your, for yours and baby's body. Protein helps build and develop a baby's muscles, bones, and other tissues, such as skin, hair, and fingernails. It is needed for healthy growth of baby's brain and supports baby overall growth. Protein provides the needed blocks that aid in the growth of the brother's breast, uterine tissues, and other reproductive tissues. Protein aids in the repair of the mother's muscles, blood, and brain during pregnancy. Protein plays a role in increasing your blood supply and balancing fluid in your body during pregnancy. Protein also aids in the mother's skin repair. Our skin contains two kinds of proteins, called collagen and elastin that aid in the skin's elasticity, and eating protein helps stimulate the collagen and elastin production. Amino acids that make up protein are the building blocks of yours and your baby's cells. Amino acids are required for normal cell growth and function in the baby. Every cell in the body contains protein and your body needs the amino acids in protein to build new cells. During pregnancy, new cells are being created for your growing baby, your uterus, and other tissues. So you see protein is very, very important during pregnancy. Postpartum and while nursing, the body needs additional protein for the mother's recovery. Postpartum and while breastfeeding, protein helps repair cells and is involved in the cell regeneration of the mother's body's postpartum. So it helps the mother heal after birth. It also is needed for the baby to continue to grow after birth. 
Adequate amounts of protein is important to consume while breastfeeding as your body consumes the protein to produce enough milk supply. So that's another thing. If you're feeling like you're lacking in your milk supply, are you consuming enough protein? So protein comes in different food sources. You have complete proteins and you have incomplete proteins. A complete protein has all of the essential amino acids that your body needs. An incomplete protein doesn't have all of them, just some of them. But sometimes you can pair up incomplete proteins to make a complete protein. So some of your complete proteins, you can get them from either animal products or um, plant-based products. So animal-based complete proteins, meat, eggs, dairy, pretty much anything that comes from an animal. And the plant-based, some of the plant-based complete proteins you have are buckwheat, quinoa, hemp seeds, chia seeds. These are plant-based complete proteins, meaning they have all your essential amino acids. And then you have other incomplete proteins that contain some proteins, but just not all of them, uh, all the amino acids. So nuts, beans, grains, you can, have, you can get protein from these things, but just not um, the complete proteins. I mean, the com yeah, the complete proteins. All right, so this is just an average protein requirement, just so you can have an idea before we go to the next slide, because I'm going to give you examples of how much protein these foods have but just so you can keep in mind what the said uh, average protein requirement is so you can get an understanding, all right? So an average requirement for a woman is 45 grams per day. Of course, that varies from woman to woman based on her age, height, um, everything. It, it varies, but this is an average that they give, all right? But when you're pregnant, look at how much more protein you need. 75 to 100 grams for a pregnant woman per day. That's over half the amount that you would be eating uh, or getting before pregnancy. So you understand how much more protein you really do need when you're pregnant. When you're breastfeeding, you need 54 to 67 grams on average. Again, these are just average amounts, but uh, you still see that that is still more than before a woman gets pregnant, but not quite as much as when she's pregnant. So if you remember those numbers, now we're going to go to the next slide. So how are you going to get that protein, right? Okay, so this is an example. So if you eat uh, a salmon filet, it'll be 25 grams of protein. Chicken breast, 23 grams. Lentils, that one's an incomplete protein, but you'll get 17 grams of protein. Ground beef, 16. And the blue are complete, the green are incomplete, if you notice. Eggs, three eggs, 18 grams. You know, a cup of spelt. That's a grain, 10 grams. Hemp seeds, in just three tablespoons of hemp seeds, you can also get 10 grams of protein. Pumpkin seeds, a fourth a cup of them, nine grams. One cup of milk, eight grams. A cup of quinoa, eight grams. Whole almonds, seven and a half grams and a fourth of a cup. Buckwheat is also a complete protein. Uh, you can get 5.7 5 grams in a cup of buckwheat. Chia seeds, in just three tablespoons, you can get five grams of protein. Oatmeal, in a cup of oatmeal, you can get five grams of protein. So if you see how much protein that you need per day, this can give you a, sort of an, a gauge of how much of these different foods you would have to need and eat in one day in order to meet those protein requirements. So if you're, let's say you're going meatless, okay, um, well, you still have to ensure that you're getting all the amino acids um, through complete proteins or by combining incomplete proteins to make a complete protein to ensure that you are still getting the same protein requirement than if you, that if you were eating meat. You understand? So no matter whether you're eating meat or not eating meat, the requirement of protein in your body doesn't change. So you have to make sure that you're eating enough protein. And so these are just examples of different sources. Okay, now we're going to move on to carbohydrates. It's general function. Carbohydrates, just so you have an understanding of what a carbohydrate is. Um, carbohydrates are sugars, fibers, and starches that provide the body with readily available energy. That's something key because fats also provide energy, but carbs are a readily available energy. The body can use it right away. It supports brain function and aids in digestion. Carbohydrates store and supply glucose that can be used by the cells for fuel. Glucose is the brain's main source of energy. Carbohydrate sugar come in different forms, such as glucose, fructose, sucrose, lactose. These are all different sugars. 
um, and, but they all break down or convert to glucose in different ways in the body. Dietary fiber adds bulk to stool and supports gut bacteria. When you consume more carbs or energy than what your body is using, it converts it to fat or energy stores. So basically what fat is, is energy stores. So when you're cons because carbs are energy, whenever you don't use up that energy, it gets stored away as fat. Um, and then your body can use your body fat for energy. So then afterwards, your body can pull from your energy stores or your fat stores for energy later on. Before pregnancy, uh, though carbohydrates are beneficial for many different purposes, too much or the wrong sources, such as refined carbohydrates, meaning the fiber has been removed, or added refined sugars can negatively affect your blood sugar levels because of the blood sugar because of the blood sugar spikes, which in turn can cause hormonal imbalances, which can affect fertility by hindering ovulation. So you need to be mindful of the food sources, all right? And if you go back to that other class that I did, you can find it on YouTube. I go into, like I said, the hormonal imbalances, which are very key for fertility, but sugar is your hormone's enemy. If you consume too much refined sugars, it will mess with your ovulation, with your hormone balance, and in turn, your overall fertility. During pregnancy, uh, carbohydrates provide fuel for mother and baby. They supply glucose, which is required for brain development and growth. Um, both the brain and placenta use glu glucose as its primary source of energy. But like I said before, there are di the different sugars like sucrose, lactose, fructose, they all convert to glucose in the body. Postpartum and while nursing, it provides energy to support breastfeeding and helps maintain energy levels after giving birth. It also helps provide energy to support, to support the growth and development of a baby. Carbohydrates are also important for brain development in infants. With your body burning energy to produce milk, women who are breastfeeding may need more carbohydrates than before they were pregnant. But note, your body will also use stored fat, meaning stored energy, to produce milk as well and you still need to make sure you're drinking a lot of water and consuming enough protein. Okay, so these are some different sources of carbohydrates. So there's carbohydrates in all these things. Um, some have less, some have more, and we're gonna explain or show an example of how much these things have. But you can get carbohydrates from whole grains like oats, kamut, spelt, quinoa, farro, millet, rice, buckwheat, is not actually a grain, but I have it there because people use it. Um, like they do other flours and grains, but buckwheat is actually not a grain. A buckwheat is actually a seed that comes from a flower. So it's a grain um, free alternative. And something cool about buckwheat, like I said before, it's also a complete protein um, and it's gluten free. And so what I have in blue are also gluten free grains for anybody who um, tries to abstain from gluten. So oats, quinoa, millet, rice, buckwheat, those are all gluten-free. Okay, other carbohydrates are legumes and beans, like lentils, peas, black, pinto, uh, chickpea, kidney, beans. Then you have carbohydrates and starchy vegetables, like potatoes, sweet potatoes, corn, squash, pumpkin, parsnips, plantains, yuca, cassava. Um, you also have carbohydrates in fruit. All fruit have carbohydrates. Other vegetables, all vegetables um, have carbohydrates, but in very low amounts. And then um, natural sweeteners like honey, maple syrup, agave, dates, they all have carbohydrates as well. So carbohydrates to avoid are the refined carbohydrates like your white flours, your breads, your pastas, and any added sugar, added refined sugar. Because those things don't have the fiber, and so they're going to cause the blood sugar spikes that, when you consume them, that hinder your fertility, hormonal balances, and things like that, and your overall health. All right, so this is an example of how many carbohydrates these things have. So for, you know, farro, and ev everything is per a cup. So what I have in red are grains, green are vegetables, blue is beans, um, yellow is the natural sweeteners. So for farro, 71 grams. Yuca, 63 grams. And all of this is per cup. Spelt, or, and yuca is cassava. So cassava, one cup of cassava is 63 grams of carbohydrates. Spelt, 51 grams. Kamut, 47. Plantains, 47. 
rice, 45, beans, 45, uh, millet, 41, sweet potato, 41, corn, 41, uh, kidney, 40, I mean kidney beans, I'm sorry, kidney beans, 40 grams, quinoa, 39 grams, lentils, 39 grams, potatoes, 35 grams, honey, uh, 34 grams, buckwheat, 33 grams, oatmeal, 30 grams, agave, 30 grams, and two tablespoons of agave, I'm sorry, two tablespoons of agave, 30 grams, two tablespoons of um, honey was 34 grams, two tablespoons of maple syrup, uh, 26 grams, 25 grams in peas, 24 grams in four dates, 22 grams in butternut squash, 17 grams in parsnips, 12 grams in pumpkin. So as you begin to understand nutrition, if you're trying to be mindful of how much energy you're putting into your body, whether you're trying to put more energy or less energy based on how much you're going to actually be using um, and how much you're actually trying to burn, then you can have an idea of how much energy all of these different foods will give you. You see some give you a lot of energy, like 70 grams in just one cup of farro. Some give you, will give you less energy, like 12 grams in pumpkin, in a cup of pumpkin. But it depends your energy needs because you might be working out. You might be working in the garden or you might be sitting down schooling your child. Um, so all of these things are good to be mindful of. How much energy do you need? Um, this is just another example. You could look at it real quick, um, but these are different fruits and vegetables and how much um, grams of carbohydrates are in these amounts in a cup. So you see spinach has like one gram of carbohydrates in a cup, and then you have your, your potato, uh, medium potato that has 33 grams um, in one medium potato. Um, same thing with the fruit. Um, one cup of, of watermelon will give you 11 grams of carbohydrates, 32 grapes, will give you 28 grams of carbohydrates. So again, carbohydrates are energy. So if you eat a bowl of grapes, that's how much energy you'll be getting from that uh, 28 grapes, for example, or 30, 32 grapes. All right, so the last of the macronutrients, fats. The general function of the fats, it provides energy, but it converts energy slower than carbohydrates. So it's not your readily available energy like a carbohydrate, so that's the distinct difference between a carb and a fat when it comes to energy. Um, but it helps the body absorb fat-soluble vitamins. You have some vitamins that absorb through fat, others through water. So um, there's specific vitamins that you need healthy fats to help absorb those vitamins. Um, it also aids in the body and hormone production. It provides essential fatty acids like omega-3 and 6, which are very important for health in many different areas. It helps regulate hunger, satiety, cholesterol, glucose, and blood sugar, and it protects your organs and supports cell growth. Something that I thought was really cool about fats and I wanted to share with y'all is that fat provides significantly more energy per gram, making it a more concentrated source of energy compared to carbs. One gram of carbs provides about four grams of calories or energy, and one gram of fat provides nine grams of calories or energy. Fat is mostly used as a long-term energy reserve, while carbs are readily available for quick energy needs. Note, um, if you have issues holding on to weight after pregnancy and have a high metabolism and you're burning through their carbs while breastfeeding, consider consuming more healthy fats. I know for me, um, at one point, that was an issue. Uh, breastfeeding was causing me to burn everything that I was, that I had on during pregnancy. The baby was just nursing and taking it on. I would um, lose too much weight after having the baby. But the healthy fats, because they're so much more concentrated in energy, um, they're so much more concentrated per gram. Um, that'll actually, that could actually help you if you're trying to hold on to more weight and trying to gain a little bit of weight. Um, or keep a little bit of weight, I should say, while breastfeeding, if you're losing too much, just consider eating more healthy fats. Before pregnancy, fats aid in hormone production and nutrient absorption, which is important for fertility. During pregnancy, fat is a source of energy for a developing baby and helps with the function of the placenta and organs. Omega-3 are essential for the development of the baby's brain, eyes, and nervous system. Omega-3 form cell membranes and help form new cell tissues. It helps promote healthy levels of body fat in baby. 
while po postpartum and while breastfeeding, dietary fats affect the composition of the fatty acids. That means the type of fat in the mother's breast milk and helps promote healthy levels of body fat in baby. Breast milk fat is a source of energy for the baby. It can aid in satiety in mother and baby. And what satiety means is um, basically feeling more satisfied for longer. Um, fatty acids in breast milk are important for uh, regulating metabolism. The omega-3 and fatty acids in the breast milk continues to support baby's neural development, which is the nervous system, the skin, the eyes, and the immune system. Healthy fats can also affect the baby's gut health, and healthy fats are important for the mother's hormone regulation postpartum. So what I thought was really, really good to remember is that the fatty acid composition, meaning the type of fats in your breast milk, so remember there's omega-3s, omega-6, you know, there's different types of fat. Well, the, uh, the type of fat in your breast milk is related to your consumption of those fats. So the amount of omega-3 that you consume will affect the amount of omega-3 in your breast milk that baby's consuming. So that's very important to remember. So what you consume when it comes to fats, that'll cause the, the breast milk to be that uh, a certain way. So I thought that was really cool to remember. All right, so these are different fat, uh, fat sources, healthy fat sources from foods. Nuts, seeds, avocado, oils, butters, fish, dairy. These are all different ways that you can get healthy fats in your diet. So fatty acids, omega-3 and 6, are essential for maintaining health. Omega-3 is essential for the heart, brain, and metabolism. And omega-6 is essential for healthy skin, hair, and nails. Can also reduce inflammation. So these are um, some of the sources that you can obtain these things in. So you have... Um, what the, you know, what the averages that they give you is that you need 200 to 300 milligrams of omega-3 daily for pregnant and nursing women. And the body stores the excess omegas for a few days and can be used later. And so you need 200 to 300 milligrams of these omegas. So when you eat these things, you see you get more than enough for your daily requirement. So your body will hold on to the excess and provide your body with those omegas on consecutive days, even after eating that piece of salmon. So let's say you ate salmon today, your body will still be feeding off of those omegas for the next few days because of how much omegas is in that one filet. So you might remember, you need two to 300 milligrams, all right? But one serving of mackerel will give you over 4,000. One serving of salmon, over 2,000. One serving of sardines, over 1,000. Flax seeds, 6,000. Chia seeds, 5,000. Hemp seeds, 3,000. Walnuts, over 2,000. So you see these seeds and these nuts and fish and things like that, they're very high on omegas, especially these seeds. You see these seeds, you just get like three tablespoons of these seeds, and you see you have omegas for like damn near a whole week or more. So you see these are very concentrated sources of omega. So they're actually not difficult to get in. And like I said, my hope is that the more you grow an understanding of what your body needs, which are these macros and micronutrients, and how much of it your body needs, you can start gauging what you're putting in your body to ensure that you are providing your body these things. But as you see, it's not difficult to put these things in your body because some of these health foods are so concentrated in these nutrients. Um, some sources of omega-6, walnuts, cashews, almonds, hemp seeds, sunflower seeds, peanut butter, avocado eggs. All right, so I'm not going to read all of this. I'm just going to hit the main points, which are the things in green. And then, like I said, I'm going to have, I can share this with anybody. I can also, um, yeah, I can email it to you afterwards if you want the actual PowerPoint and you can read through each one of them. But um, just some of the functions of vitamin A, it helps with vision, the immune system, male and female reproduction, cell growth, um, development of your organs, or normal development of the organs for baby, um, helps to maintain healthy skin, healthy teeth, helps with the development of the baby's eyes, lungs, skeleton, and the other organs in the baby. It influences bone development. It stimulates the thyroid gland to produce hormones, and it helps with postpartum tissue repair and it's essential for the mammary gland development and the production of milk. 
So vitamin A, you see how important it is before, during, and after. It aids in fertility, helps with the baby growing, and then helps with your breastfeeding journey afterwards. So all of these, you're going to see that they have so many amazing functions, and you don't want to be deficient in them, meaning you don't want to be not consuming foods that have these things in them because it can affect your baby's development. It can affect your breast milk. It can affect your fertility. These are very important, and we need to take our nutrition more seriously. Okay, vitamin C helps with tissue growth and repair, collagen production, wound healing, bone and teeth maintenance and repair, iron absorption, calcium absorption. It's an antioxidant. It's involved in protein metabolism. It helps produce progesterone, which is important for our fertility. It is beneficial for sperm, and, um, sperm health and quality. It helps improve egg health, regulates menstrual cycles and ovulation, um, maintains healthy immune system, is important for the physical development of baby and baby skin, cartilage, tendons, and bones. It is a key antioxidant in breast milk, which helps fight against infections. So if your baby's sick, you can consume vitamin C, and your baby can benefit from that while the baby nurses. So let's say the baby's like three weeks old. You don't want to start giving the baby supplements and things like that. Well, you can just give your baby your breast milk, but make sure you're consuming what you need to consume so the baby can get what the baby needs. Vitamin D helps, with, uh, helps to absorb calcium, magnesium, phosphate. It's essential for building and maintaining bones, teeth, heart, and nervous system. It's needed for muscle and nerve function. It helps the immune system fight off bacteria and viruses. It regulates high blood pressure, reduces inflammation. Um, it's important for proper placental development in the first trimester. And the sun is a great source of vitamin D. Um, and Vitamin D, like I said, it's, it's very important. You can get it through food, but you can also get it through the sun, just staying out longer. The more melanin you have, the longer you have to stay in the sun. So instead of the 20 minutes that they advise to stay in the sun, you have to stay out in the sun for a few hours. Um, and But it's one of a, a fat-soluble vitamin, so it will store in your body. So if it's when and you're like, I can't go outside as much, um, Try to get as much sun as you can during the spring, summer, you know, fall, because your body does store up vitamin D as well, um, and you can get it through some foods as well. But make it a priority to get it, so try to get outside as much as you can. Vitamin E, it protects cells from damage, and uh, it protects cells from damage, it helps your immune system, it helps uh, your blood vessels to prevent from clotting, um, it helps with your with your cells when they interact with one another and perform important functions. It helps your red blood cells. It helps the body use vitamin K. It helps your nervous system, your skin, your eyes, um, and the baby's skin and eyes. It helps with fertility and implantation. Um, it can affect sperm movement. Um, it can protect the sperm. It can um, protect it from free radicals so it can reach the egg more easily. Um, it's important for infant development of the immune system, lungs, vascular system, mental development, and can help with tissue repair and healing after birth. Um, colostrum has the highest levels of vitamin E, and then it decreases as the baby gets older, but your colostrum is, has the highest concentration of vitamin E, and you see it's very important for all these different things. Vitamin K1 and 2. Uh, vitamin K1 is important for blood clotting. It helps the body clot. So that way uh, you prevent hemorrhaging, especially good, for, especially good for you to prevent hemorrhaging, but also you need to consume enough if, you have a, if you're having a son because then it'll help prevent him from hemorrhaging um, circumcision. That's actually very important too, so you have to make sure you're consuming enough with your baby in mind as well for circumcision. Um, K2 also helps the body absorb calcium, so it's important for bone building. And then last but not least, there are B vitamins. Um, they help convert food to energy. They help your red blood cells, your neurotransmitters. Um, they sy help synthesize DNA and RNA involved in cellular metabolism, gut health, brain function, improves fertility and sperm quality. Um, health, it helps promote healthy progesterone levels, which as I said in my other class is very important for fertility and holding and maintaining a pregnancy. Um, it helps relieve leg cramps, helps um, the development of a healthy nervous system, improves digestion, helps with eye, helps um, in keeping eyes healthy, supports baby's continued brain development and red, red cell production after birth, all right? So two things I wanted to just note real quick was um, 
for postpartum tears. Consider making sure that you're consuming enough vitamin A, C, E, and zinc, which are all beneficial um, in either wound healing, um, collagen production, and cell repair for skin health. And then also um, uh, for your immune system, consider A, C, D, E, and zinc, because all these vitamins and that mineral help with your um, immune system. So you see all of these are very important you don't want to be lacking in any of them. All right, for your minerals, I didn't put all the minerals, just these few examples, um, but calcium, very important. Um, I'm not going to read through all of them. Magnesium, potassium, iron, iodine, zinc, all of them, they're either good for your immune system, for building blood, building bones, building um, cells, maintaining hormones. They all are very important, just like the vitamins that I read. So like I said, you can look at this afterwards, I can email it to you, um, but you can also go further than this and even look up these vitamins and minerals yourself. You know, what is the benefits of magnesium? You know, what is the benefits of potassium? But like I said, it, I, I made it to be like an easy guide right here. So afterwards I can email it to you. You can look at this as well. Um, but all of these minerals and vitamins have very important functions and you don't wanna be lacking in any of them for your sake and for baby's sake. So these are just some food examples. So you can see that when you consume these foods, these individual foods, what are you getting? All right, so watermelon. Okay, so I'm gonna go to what it has the most of. So in 100 grams of watermelon, you can get 19% of your daily value of vitamin A, 13% of your daily value of vitamin C, and then you see it has all these other vitamins and minerals in smaller amounts as well. If you eat 100 grams of roast beef, um, you can get 26% of your daily um, needs of iron. You can get 35% of your daily needs of phosphorus. You can get 27% uh, of your daily needs of selenium. And then you have other um, vitamins in, or you have other minerals, I'm sorry, other minerals in there as well in smaller amounts. Mulberries, mulberries, uh, my mom put me um, or got me on mulberries. They're, um, they, they look like a raisin, but they're, some of them are white, um, but they're very high in vitamin C. So 100 grams of mulberries will give you 61% of your daily value of vitamin C. So even if you just consume a few tablespoons of them, you're still getting a significant amount of vitamin C. Uh, you get 23% of iron. And you see there's other ones in there, but they're of smaller amounts, but it's still something. All right, one ounce of chia seeds, so that's about one serving. Um, you can get, now see, the seeds are so nutrient dense that you only need a little bit, just a few tablespoons. And it's like you just took a whole supplement, like a whole vitamin pill, because they're so nutrient dense. So vitamin, uh, yeah, vitamin B3, 16%, B1, 15%. Uh, folate, 3%, um, manganese, 33%, uh, copper, 29%, selenium, 28%, magnesium, 23%, phosphorus, 20%, calcium, 14%, iron, zinc, both 12%. So you see, that's, that's a big deal. That really is, because that's like at least a fourth of some of your daily needs of these vitamins. And if you just add this to your oatmeal or your smoothie or your yogurt or your salad, look at how much you can get just with that alone. Hemp seeds, hemp seeds are one of my favorites for these reasons. Just three tablespoons, so if you just put three tablespoons in your smoothie, all right? 32% of your D, I mean of your B1, 17% B3, 11% B6, 8% um, folate, 7% B2, um, manganese, 99%. So you're done with manganese for the rest of the day if you consume three tablespoons of hemp seeds. 53, so over half percent of your daily needs of copper. 50%, half of your daily needs of magnesium. That's a big deal. Like, what do you need a, a supplement of magnesium if you can eat some hemp seeds and get half of your daily value of magnesium? 40% phosphorus, 27% zinc. 14% selenium, 13% iron, and that's just in three tablespoons, and it's a complete protein. So I th like I said, I love hemp seeds. Okay, walnuts. 
48% manganese, 22% copper, 11% magnesium, right? And you have all these other vitamins and minerals in them as well. 6% uh, zinc, 5% iron. Pumpkin seeds, um, they have 8 grams of protein in just one ounce, 14 grams of fat. Um, you get 56% of your daily needs of manganese, 42% of copper, 40% magnesium, 28% phosphorus, 20% zinc, which remember zinc is good for your immune system as well, um, and 14% iron. Okay, dried apricots. Um, I really enjoyed apricots when I found them because um, I was trying to look for a way to make sure that we're consuming more vitamin A, my children and I, and my master. So just 100 grams of apricots. Now, mind you, you may not eat all 100 grams, but even if you just eat a fourth of a cup of apricots, you're getting a very significant amount, and I'll explain. But 100 grams gives you 141% of your daily value of vitamin A. Vitamin A is also a fat-soluble vitamin, so even if you eat, consume a little bit more of it one day, it'll continue to stay there for some other days, and it'll provide your body with those vitamin A needs even in consecutive days from eating it. Um, but if you just get a fourth of a cup, it's about 60 grams, I mean 60% of your daily value. So just a fourth of a cup of apricots. So just a small handful, 60% of your vitamin A needs, which is a very important for yours and baby's vision health. So that's very important to remember. Um, and 25% potassium, so it's also very high in potassium, which we know is an electrolyte. Um, copper and magnesium is also very high in those, but I didn't mention this, but I said electrolytes, some people may not understand, but you have certain minerals that are important for your hydration, and so potassium is one of them. Okay, if you have one serving of wild salmon, you have um, eight grams of fat, 127% um, of your daily value of B12, 56% of your daily value of B6, 85% selenium, 63% niacin, which is a B vitamin, 38% um, of another B vitamin, 23% of another B vitamin. So a lot of B vitamins can you can get with salmon. 21% um, of phosphorus and um, pretty much 100% of your daily value of vitamin D if it's wild caught. If it's not wild caught, it's significantly less, but still a, a decent amount compared to other foods. Um, so salmon is high in omegas, vitamin D, and all these other uh, B vitamins. A one cup of raw kale will give you 68% of your daily value, value of vitamin K. I really stress vitamin K for pregnant women, especially um, if you're going to be having a boy, but even if you're having a girl, because you don't want to hemorrhage after having a baby. But if you have a boy, you don't want him to hemorrhage from circumcision, through circumcision. So making sure you have enough vitamin K is key, and you can get it as easy as consuming two cups of kale in a day. So it's not, it's not difficult uh, to consume these vitamins and minerals when you eat real food. The real food out there contains these vitamins and minerals that your body needs. You just have to be proactive in consuming these things, which is they're just real food. Vitamin C, 22%, um, and then you have manganese, vitamin A, calcium. So you can actually get calcium from your greens as well. I think people just think milk, but you can actually get calcium from greens, almonds, chia seeds. All right, goat milk. One cup of goat milk has 9 grams of protein, 10 grams of fat, 11 grams of carbs. Uh, goat milk is one of the, com I call them complete foods because they have all three macronutrients. They have proteins, carbs, and fats. And you notice they, um, uh, in the word, they speak quite a bit about milk and goat milk. So I thought that was cool. Um, calcium in one cup gives you 33% of your daily value. Phosphorus, 27%. Vitamin A, 15%. Vitamin D, 16%. Potassium, 11%. Okay, in almonds, uh, you get 8% um, of your daily value of calcium, 37% of your daily value of vitamin E. Well, we saw how important vitamin E was. You can get quite a bit of vitamin E through almonds, 19% um, of your daily value of magnesium, which we saw magnesium was also very important, and 6% um, of your daily value of iron. Kiwi, kiwi is, is a superfood in itself as well because you can get... 83% of your daily value in just one kiwi. So if you want more vitamin C and you're not feeling well, you feel like you're getting down with, you know, a cold or something, 
eat a kiwi. You can give yourself a boost of vitamin C. Um, it also is high in vitamin K as well. So 34% of your daily value of vitamin K, 15% of copper. It has folate as well. Vitamin E. One whole avocado. I love avocado when I'm pregnant and nursing. Avocado is very nutrient dense as well. 22% in just one avocado, 22% of your daily value of vitamin C, 28% of your daily value of vitamin E. So it has your healthy fats as well. 35% um, of vitamin K, 20% of your uh, B vitamin 2, B vitamin 3, 22%. Um, 56 of your B5 vitamins, 30% of your B6 vitamins, 41% of folate. Folate is very important to avoid birth defects. So it helps baby develop properly. So folate is very important when you're pregnant to consume enough of that. But look, you can get almost half of it through just one avocado. So that's really amazing. Um, Yahweh really provided us what we have need of through his, the food that he created. 14% magnesium, 21% potassium, 42% copper, 12% manganese. So that's like a superfood right there. Okay, we don't have much more of, of these examples, but um, mango, uh, these are examples of mango. Mango is another food that's super high. It's very nutrient dense. Um, one cup of fresh, just one cup, so that's not even the whole mango, just one cup of fresh mango is 20% copper, 80% folate, 12% B6, 10% A, vitamin A, 10% vitamin E, 6% vitamin K, and you see all the other vitamins there and minerals. All right, so that was it for the examples of the food. Now I'm just going to um, give examples of what you should consider when you're making your daily food choices. All right, so when you're thinking food, what am I going to eat today? What am I going to cook? What am I going to buy? Think protein, carbs, fats. All right. So when you're making your breakfast or you're making your supper, think proteins, carbs, fat. What's going to be my protein? What are what are going to be there for carbs? What are going and how many carbs am I trying to aim for? Am I trying to have a lot of quick energy or not that much quick energy? Right. Fats. How am I going to get my fats within this meal? And if you go back and you see the different food sources, you can just pick one from each of those categories and you have a meal right there. All right, so um, you also want to think, when you're thinking about what you're going to eat, the menu you're going to make for the week, think fruits, also think fruits, vegetables, nuts, seeds, right? Because those are really going to provide you with your micronutrients that I mentioned before, like your vitamins and your minerals. These things, as you see, your fruits, your veggies, your nuts, your seeds are extremely high in your micronutrients. That's why they always say, eat your veggies, you know? Eat, eat fruit because they're so high in your micronutrients, all right? So you're, with your protein, um, with, your, with your, your meat, your grain, your, you know, your, your let's say your, your butter, you're getting your protein, your carbs, your fats, but what about all your micronutrients? You're getting them from your fruits, your veggies, your nuts, your seeds mainly, all right? So at home, um, this is what we do. We always try to make sure that our main two meals, a breakfast and supper, always contain the three macros. So we always keep that in mind. And then, uh, and we always ensure that there's a vegetable at every meal. And then throughout the day, I make a conscious effort to consume fruit, nuts, and seeds. Um, so I wanted to give an example of the difference of keeping these things in mind versus what some Americans do. Some Americans for breakfast, all they'll eat is a bowl of cereal. Well, you're not really getting everything that you need in that bowl of cereal, and you're going to stay hungry. And so that's why sometimes women think, well, I stay hungry, I'm still hungry, I need to eat more, I need to eat more, I need to eat more. Well, sometimes it's because you're not giving yourself the proper fuel to begin with, so you're going to stay hungry. It's actually not going to, a bowl of cereal is not going to give you all the nutrients you need, and it's going to keep you hungry. It's not going to be satiating. Whereas if you eat a bowl of oatmeal and you have some eggs with that, add some chia seeds, hemp seeds, flax seeds to that oatmeal, put an avocado next to those eggs, that breakfast right there is going to hold you for a long time because you've got your, pro your proteins, your carbs, your fats, and it's very nutrient dense. You just gave yourself a whole bunch of vitamins and minerals right there. All right? And so some people say, well, what about it's too expensive to eat this way? It's, no, it's not. It's not actually. It's when you, because I've seen, I've seen how people snack and eat and things like that. 
If you just ate a bowl of cereal, yeah, you're going to be starved in the next hour. You're going to be hungry still, so then you're going to go for those bag of chips. So that's also not going to satisfy you because it's still um, nutrient empty. So you're still going to be hungry, and you're, you might eat three bags of chips and still be starving. Then you might eat a granola bar full of sugar. Well, now you're still hungry because that didn't give you much of anything either, but it caused you to crave more sugar. Um, then let's say you um, drink a power drink, but it's also full of sugar. You see, like, that's why people think, well, I, it, it's, I have to eat so much, so if I eat this way, this food is so expensive, so it's going to break the bank. No, because instead of having to snack, snack 10 times in the day with all of those nutrient-empty foods, you can eat more nutrient-dense foods, and then you'll be satisfied for longer. You see, so then you're not having to snack all throughout the day. So if I give my children a bowl of fruit for snack, and some trail, homemade trail mix with some nuts and seeds and dried fruit, they're going to be satisfied till supper. But if I give them a granola bar, mommy, I'm still hungry. Give them a bag of chips, mommy, I'm still hungry. Give them, you know, uh, another bag of chips, mommy, I'm still hungry. Why? Because we're not satisfying their nutritional needs. And they're going to want to eat, 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 eat. And that's why then we end up having to buy 10,000 snacks. But if you, if you buy nutrient-dense foods, You'll, have to, you, you'll be able to get away with buying less of it. All right, so this is, um, we're nearing to our end. We only have a few more slides, and then I'm going to pass it on to Sister Gabby. But um, some nutritional snack ideas, because sometimes we get intimidated because we're like, well, what can I make for my children when they're hungry? What can I snack on? I'm pregnant. I, I snack more frequently throughout the day, okay? So every, like I said, everybody has different diets they follow, some um, avoid certain things or others, but I'm just going to cover just different ideas to cover the broad spectrum of everybody's different um, eating ways, and you can pick and choose anything that you may like from here. All right, so some things that I consume with my children and my master uh, for snacking. All right, fruit and fruit bowls, sliced apples and a nut butter, smoothies, homemade granola without, I make it without refined sugar. I just use honey or date syrup or maple syrup. Date bars, homemade date bars, homemade nut, ba nut butter balls, like peanut butter balls or almond butter balls. Um, homemade trail mix with nuts, seeds, and dried fruit. And I make it homemade so that way they don't have all the extra added oils and sugars that you have in the trail mix out there. Um, a fresh salad. I know you might think fresh salad for snacking on, but I've made an amazing salad that my children loved to snack on. It was very tasty. You get kale and you chop it up really fine to where they can eat it with a spoon instead of having to use a fork. And so even my youngest can eat it. So it's fresh salad. I cut it up, chop it real small. Um, I chop up some apples, small as well, put them in there, add some nuts like almonds or walnuts. Um, put some feta cheese in there, put some raisins in there, and then I make a homemade vinaigrette with just lemon, oil, salt, olive oil. And they loved it. And I make a big bowl of it, and it stays good in the fridge for some days because it's kale. It's not romaine lettuce. And they would just go in there, get some out of the bowl, and they snack on it. It's a ready snack, so it's not something I have to make every day. And the children loved it. They loved it, and it's very nutrient-dense. Um, Plain yogurt, one thing I would do so I wouldn't buy the sugar yogurts if I wanted yogurt. Um, right now I'm not eating yogurt, but for those who can handle dairy, um, I would get the plain yogurt and I would put um, honey or maple syrup to sweeten it myself. And then you can add cinnamon, vanilla, um, fruit, whatever you want to add to it. You can eat it with homemade granola. Um, also homemade bread or homemade tortillas from anything that your body can handle. Some people can handle gluten, some people... Um, you know, can handle certain grains, but then you also have grain-free flours like the buckwheat that still has your carbs, um, but it's gluten-free for those who can't handle gluten. Um, some people, if you want a whole grain, some people do spelt flour. Um, there's many different options. You can, you know, look at the list, like I said, and look at different things that may suit you, um, but you can do homemade bread or homemade tortillas and have some uh, a healthy nut butter and jelly, and when I say healthy nut butter or jelly, that just means without the extra added oils and sugars. You can buy sugar-free peanut butter, almond butter that just has salt added to it, doesn't have the extra oils like palm oil, canola oil. You want to avoid those things. Um, you can have hummus and vegetables, um, baked plantains. If you're needing a carb, plantains. I love having plantains on hand. You can bake them. You can fry them. I, when I do fry them, I fry them in ghee. 
ghee has a very high smoke point. You can fry in ghee. And it's better than all those other um, oils that people use for frying. Um, olives with fresh mozzarella cheese. It's actually very tasty. So if you like olives, olives and mozzarella cheese, the fresh mozzarella cheese, very tasty. And um, another thing I snack on, when I, especially when I'm pregnant and I'm hungry, I save leftovers from breakfast and supper. So that way I'm not trying to scramble for snacks all day. I'll eat breakfast. I'll save seconds from breakfast for lunch. I'll eat supper. I'll save seconds from supper for my later evening snack because I know I'm going to be hungry. Because, you know, when you're pregnant, you eat more frequently sometimes throughout the day, smaller meals. Well, I'll just save more breakfast, more supper. So I know if I'm cooking a good breakfast and a good supper, it's going to be a good snack later. Um, so I just wanted to show these pictures to encourage you. Look how beautiful these snack foods are. Maybe it'll encourage you to want to make them. They're very tasty. They're very delicious, very colorful, very nutritious. All right. All right. So I only got four more slides and then I'm going to pass it to Sister Gabby. But in a nutshell, pregnancy and nutrition, um, you must be extra anal about nutrition, especially if you are having babies back to back. And I say that because sometimes we want to build our tribes and our village and our family and our master's home, but we're not taking care of ourselves to do so in a healthy manner. Especially when you have them back to back, you're going to need even the more so to diligently, diligently stay on top of your nutrition. When I got pregnant with Anna back to back from Salome, that was one thing I had to do even 10 times better than I did even uh, in the last pregnancies because I had spaced them out. So my body had an opportunity to sort of build up in the nutrition stores. But because it was so back to back, I was still nursing. I was only eight months postpartum when I got pregnant. I had to really make sure that I was getting everything I needed for the baby. I was still nursing because I was still nursing when I was pregnant and then still have enough for my growing baby and still have enough for me. So um, the nutrition was very key. I needed to make sure that my food was very nutrient dense throughout that time in order to have a healthy pregnancy when I got pregnant so back to back. Okay, um, not the issues that we have with pregnant women sometimes is either not eating enough and so they're not um, giving their baby the, uh, the nutrients that their baby needs, so then baby may have a low birth rate or have some complications later, or um, eating too much and of the wrong things. So if you're eating cookies, cakes, ice cream, chips, sugary drinks, right, you're going to gain a whole bunch of weight, but your baby's not getting any nutritional benefit. So you can, mommy could have gained like I don't know, 80 pounds, I'm being, I'm being extra with it, you know, but I'm just trying to give an example. And the baby can be a very small baby. Why? Because mommy ate a bunch of stuff to put on the weight, but the baby didn't get anything baby needed to grow healthy, you see? So that's why I say we're eating, we're either not eating enough of the things that we need to be consuming, or we're eating too much of the bad stuff. So both ways, you might not be doing enough or being doing too much of the bad stuff, all right? No matter how big or small you are, uh, whether you're underweight or overweight, we all need the same nutrients, especially when pregnant, meaning everyone in this room needs protein. Everyone needs some form of carbohydrate. Everybody needs some, uh, need your healthy fats. Everybody needs vitamin A. Everybody needs vitamin B, C, D, E, iron, calcium, magnesium. We all ha need, have needs of these nutrients. So no matter whether you're like, well, I'm a little overweight or, oh, I'm a little underweight, you all need these vitamins and minerals. You all need these nutrients. So baby needs these things while you're pregnant and while you're nursing. Um, but there is a difference between nutrient-dense and calorie-dense foods. So uh, let's say you are um, a little bit on the heavier side but you still need these nutrients. Well, there's some more nutrient-dense foods that are not very high in calories, but will give you a hell of a lot of these vitamins and minerals. So if you consume, you still need to consume enough protein because that's your building block. You need, still need your healthy fats because you see that help, helps with everything. But let's say you already have a lot of energy reserve already, and so maybe you're not eating as many carbs, okay? But you still need the vitamins and the minerals. Well, if you eat your fruits and your veggies, a lot, an abundance of fruit and veggies, you won't, they are not calorie dense, right? Kale is not calorie dense. Kiwi is not calorie dense, but they're very nutrient dense. You're going to get a lot of the nutrition that you need with that kale salad, with that fruit bowl, with that smoothie, without all the extra 
calories that you may not need if you're trying to use your stored energy. Um, and then if you're trying to keep the weight or trying to hold on to more weight, if you're losing too much, then you can eat more calorie-dense foods. There's some foods that are, you just eat a little bit of it, and it's like it just has a lot of, you know, calories in it to help you maintain that healthy weight. And so an example of calorie-dense foods are your healthy fats. Because like I said, just one gram of a fat has nine grams of energy compared to a carbohydrate, which is quite significant. It's more than double. Um, and I wanted to share, it's actually good to gain healthy fat during pregnancy, um, especially if you don't have the, the, the stored fat or energy already. So whenever you're pregnant, this is just an average breakdown. So let's say baby gains about seven and a half pounds. Your uterus was about two pounds. Your placenta was about a, a one and a half pounds. Your amniotic fluid was about two pounds. Your breast enlargement, you know, caused you to gain two pounds. Your extra blood and fluid volume caused you to gain another eight pounds. But then you also have a fat reserve. Um, so let's say you gain seven pounds of fat reserve. What that fat reserve is for is to help you produce milk after the fact, so do I have it here? Nope. Okay, so yeah, so whenever you have that fat reserve, your body does that on purpose to be able to give you energy and make milk afterwards. So our body naturally will hold on to some fat so it's not, oh, I can't gain any extra fat. No, you'll hold on to a little bit afterwards. What we're trying to avoid is the excess. That is like even when you're breastfeeding, you still have all that extra that you, that you may not want. And some of that can be avoided by not eating these nutrient empty foods that are just gonna add the weight without adding the nutritional value that your baby actually needs. All right, breastfeeding. Um, a mother's nutritional intake has a direct correlation with the composition of her breast milk. So the nutrition that you put into your body will affect what nutrition is in your breast milk for a baby. If you are not producing much milk, make sure that you are drinking enough water. Like I said, it's 80 to 90% water your breast milk is. Make sure that you are consuming enough protein. Protein is super key. It's help building your baby. It's helping your baby grow. Make sure that um, depending some, like I said, some women may need to increase um, their fats and carbs for um, their energy stores that they're burning in making their breast milk. Um, and then also make sure that you are not stressing or fearing because when you're stressed out, there's this cortisol in the body that can mess up your breast milk production. And so don't be fearful going into it. Am I going to make enough milk? Um, oh, is the baby going to latch on correctly? Have a lot of faith. Trust in the Most High Yah. Believe that he is faithful, that he is good, that he made your body to do this. And lean on him. Lean on the Most High. Be at peace, perfect peace. Uh, with a mind state on him, and just trust in him. Don't fear. There's no fear in faith. There's no fear in trust and trusting the Most High, yeah. And so um, if you are stressing and fearing, that can also hinder your milk supply. Um, and then, of course, make sure that, um, oh, and then if you are drinking enough water and you're making sure to have a well-balanced diet to ensure that baby is receiving all the macro and micronutrients, just be at peace and take care of yourself and get the rest you need as well. So sleeping, make sure you're not pulling all-nighters. I know sometimes you have to wake up because baby needs you, but you know if you're exhausted, you're tired, tired, and you just had a new baby, sleep in the middle of the day with your baby as well. Resting is important for your body to utilize these nutrients and to rebuild itself. Sleeping is important as well. All right, um, my last two slides, and then I'm gonna pass it on to Sister, Cara, um, Sister Gabby. All right. All right. Everyone will have different bodily needs and requirements of nutrition based on age, weight, season of life, and physical lifestyle. So um, if you're working out, if you're not working out, if you're working in the garden or you're schooling a child, if you're, you know, an older woman, if you're a younger woman, if you're um, pregnant, not pregnant, okay? You need to listen to your body. Different people respond different, differently to different foods based on many different factors, um, pay attention to how your body responds after different foods. Are you, experiencing, are you experiencing abdominal discomfort, bloating, gas, etc.? Some people are able to digest certain foods easier than other people for various different reasons. Some people can't handle gluten. Some people can't handle dairy, right? So just pay attention to your body, see how it responds to different foods, and personalize it to, your, to yourself. 
Um, just make sure you're always getting the nutrition that you need, even if you change what you're eating. All right, last but not least, um, balance, okay? You need an adequate amount of all these things, but just as it is detrimental to not have enough of these things, there is such a thing as getting too much of these vitamins and minerals and macronutrients, okay? So you have to do all things with balance. Uh, there is such a thing as vitamin A toxicity, vitamin D toxicity, you know, protein overload, right? You might be doing too much. Some people get zealous and they'll be like, I'm gonna just start taking all this like vitamin A and they're taking like, you know, then you can actually do the opposite and hurt yourself rather than help yourself. I'm gonna take all this calcium supplement and you might actually hurt yourself then um, help yourself. So you also have to be mindful. You can get a lot of these things through a healthy diet, um, but just be mindful that you're not going um, overboard with some of these things. Keep balance, all right? Supplementation. Be careful because, like I said, consuming too much of uh, too high amounts can cause toxicity in the body and have negative effects on you and baby. So, oh, I'm pregnant. I'm gonna take a supplement for all of these vitamins, and each one of these vitamins have like a thousand percent of your daily value. You can actually end up hurting your baby and yourself. So don't, you know, be careful with that. Um, especially because most of these vitamins and minerals are synthetic. All right. Um, I'm not saying don't do it, meaning don't supplement. What I'm saying is do your research and consider the amounts on the bottle. A prenatal could be sufficient with a well-balanced diet along with your DHA and your, and your probiotics. All right, be weary of herbs while pregnant and nursing. Some can cause more harm than good if not taken properly, especially while pregnant, okay? Instead, focus on making the right food choices and make um, the correct foods your main source of nourishment while pregnant. Um, there was one sister who was taking fennel, right, because she thought, well, fennel's good for breastfeeding. I can take it while pregnant. No, because while pregnant, it can actually cause miscarriage, right? She's like, oh, I, I, I take this vitamin because it's good for my hair, so I'm, I'm going to just keep on taking it for my hair. No, because that one can cause also miscarriage, right? And so some sisters just don't know the different uses of these different herbs, and you can actually hurt yourself and hurt your baby, um, by just, oh, just uh, one sister was drinking a tea and didn't realize that this tea, it was like one of those teas you just buy at the store in the little baggies. And turns out, and she started cramping really bad. Mind you, she was like second trimester, third trimester, somewhere in there. She started hurting really bad. When she looked at the back of the label and she looked up the different ingredients, one of them can cause miscarriage. So you see, you got to be very careful. Look at, look at what you're trying to consume. Be very mindful of it and be you know, if you don't know what you're doing, don't consume any herbs if you don't know what you're doing, okay? Um, there, um, during pregnancy, and let me rephrase that, during pregnancy. During pregnancy, it's a very delicate time, and you don't want to hurt your, your body if you don't know what you're doing, all right? There are natural supplementations, but you need to get checked up to know what your body needs. Example, um, I'm going to give an example of something that happened with me. I was pregnant with Anna, and I was still nursing Salome. And I remember I was starved all the time. Like, I was hungry. Like, I would damn near be in tears because I was so hungry. Like, I would eat breakfast, and an hour later, I'm like, give me some food, somebody. You know, they'd be cooking in the supper on the community. They'd be like, listen, give me a bowl of beans or something. I am hungry. And I feel like I need to eat all day. I felt like I was literally eating all day. Like, every 30 minutes, give me something else, right? And when I went to, it was an Amish doctor. He checks your blood. And he, just with one prick, and he looks at the cells from that one drop of blood, and he was able to tell me what I specifically needed for my body. He told my master what he needed, which was very different than what I needed based on his deficiencies and what my children needed based on, you know, their health. And he said, you know, I recommend you take a liquid chlorophyll, B12, um, and it was from Nature Sunshine, so it was very natural, and a liquid mineral with, from a kaya berry. I'm telling you, when I took that, I instantly was more satiated. So I believe my body was craving, craving, craving because I wasn't getting the nutrition that I needed. And this was before I was more conscious of eating the nuts and the seeds and the, you know, the, what I'm doing right now. I wasn't really taking care of myself that well um, during that pregnancy. And so I was just hungry because I wasn't getting the nutrition that I needed. So my body was just craving and craving and craving more food. But once I started taking that and my body got what it needed through that as well, then I remember I could stay hours and be content. Mind you, in my third trimester, I was like, whoa, this never happened. 
you know, so I was very, very impressed. I knew it worked. I knew it worked. But not every woman needs the same things because not every woman is lacking in the same things. That's why I say I went to him specifically and he told me what I needed. So if you are able to go get checked up and you are able to be told what you are low in, what you have need in, then you can be more specific in your approach. Um, last but not least, if you avoid processed foods, if you avoid refined food, uh, if you avoid processed foods, refined foods, added sugars, bad oils, and replace these things with real food, meaning one ingredient foods, meaning meat, whole grains, vegetables, beans, nuts, seeds, fruits, milk, eggs, and if you drink plenty of water, you should be able to obtain the nutrients your body needs to thrive. Bless you. Bless y'all. <laughs> How many people were in my class? Um, okay, so y'all know what I'm about to say? Move closer, please. <laughs> Hallelujah. My sister did an awesome job. Awesome, awesome job. She, in fact, she, in fact, hit on a lot of the things that I was going to speak about, so I'm not going to speak on those things. I may emphasize on a few points, and for the sake of time, I'm only going to emphasize on a few points, and hopefully the questions that y'all have, I'll be able to answer based off of what I do have in my notes. Um, I'm going to call Carolina up here with me as well, um, because what I need to speak about is definitely going to be based off of obedience. And Lina's going to hit on some points in obedience. Um, with the nutrition, with preconception, pregnancy, labor, and delivery, and recovery, it all surrounds obedience. You can get all the information in the world. You can have all the supplements on your nightstand, in your bathroom cabinet, in your cupboards, in your kitchen, but if you are not obedient, you will not be successful, okay? So, um, I feel like your PowerPoint, Erica, was, was me. <laughs> I am plant-based, okay? <laughs> so, that was perfect, and y'all have me as an example as um, you don't have to only get your protein from meats. I've been plant-based for several years now, and I've still had very healthy children. They all come out eight pounds and higher, and that has been done plant-based. That shows you how important the legumes, the nuts, the fats, the healthy fats are in your diet. So I don't want anybody to think that it's not doable, because it is doable. The one thing that I do want to hit on that she talked about was the hunger. I was very, very hungry prior um, to being plant-based, and I didn't understand it why either. And then, like she said, when she was told about the chlorophyll, you need chlorophyll. It helps protein break down and absorb in the body. If you do not have the right amount of chlorophyll in your system, you can eat as much protein as you want, but guess what? Your body's only gonna hold on to a certain amount. So that means the rest of that protein is going to get turned into fat. And then that, if it's not turned into fat, it's either going to get used as muscle or it's going to get burned up regardless. So that means you're going to be hungry all over again. If you get the chlorophyll in your system, it'll properly synthesize all of the protein that you're getting in. Okay? So I did want to hit on that. Um, I do want to read this scripture um, because I want us to have this in our mind. Remember, our bodies are not our own, okay? Our babies or our children are not our own, okay? Psalms 127 and 3 states, children are a gift from Yahweh. They are a reward from him. So if I give you a gift, how will you take care of it? Think about it from that standpoint. It's a gift from the Most High. The only spirit, person, 
in the world that you're receiving the perfect gift from. Remember, when it was given to you, it was given to you in perfection. So you need to have the mindset that I need to make sure that this child in my womb is given back to Yahweh in the perfection that he gave it to me. So when you think of it in that aspect, you're going to see how important and valuable this information is that you just received, which goes all the way back to being obedient. Well, who are you being obedient to? Because if you think, okay, I'm going to be obedient to Sister Gabrielle. I'm going to be obedient to Sister Erica. I'm going to be obedient to Sister Carolina. You need to think from this standpoint, I'm going to be obedient to the Most High, who has placed these sisters in my life to help me make sure that the perfect gift that he gave me is end up being delivered perfectly, is end up being reared perf perfectly, and given the perfect nutrients that it needs. Because at the end of the day, we are bearing sons and daughters to prepare for Yah's return, okay? We don't want sons and daughters on the battlefield breaking down, not because the enemy done threw a dart at them, but they're breaking down because their bodies were not sufficiently developed, okay? That's how vitally important and crucial this is, okay? Um, I have a few statistics that I want to share with you guys. Um, this, Erica pretty much covered all the, the nutritional um, components that I had in my notes as well. But I want to go to the physical standpoint for a moment. Because yes, you could be strong in spirit, but let me tell you, she just talked about imbalances. You cannot be strong in spirit, but then you're weak in the flesh. How you maintain your flesh shows you and everybody else how spiritually strong you are, how spiritually mature you are. Um, I remember the wisdom mother gave me um, when it was going to be my first time dwelling communally with um, other families and other sisters. And one thing she said to me was, daughter, you'll be, able to, you'll be able to notice how someone's spirit is by walking in the kitchen when they're preparing a meal. I said, wow, I never thought of that. And she was right. If you walk in the kitchen and you see that there is chaos everywhere while they are trying to prepare a meal, for the saints, then that'll give you a good idea of their spirit. If you walk in the kitchen and the kitchen is clean and they're cooking a meal and it doesn't even look like anybody's in there, that gives you a pretty good indicator of their spirit, that they're able to delegate and move things. They're very organized. They're, ab they're able to separate what needs to be dealt with first and what needs to be dealt with last. So it's the same thing in this aspect. You have to be balanced. If you are balanced in spirit, you're going to be balanced in the physical, okay? If you are disciplined in your spiritual life, you're going to be disciplined in your physical life, okay? I want to say that because, um, let me scroll down to this note that I have. I pulled up on my um, document in my last class, and, um, okay, here it is. I talked about the weaker vessel. And I said, if you go look up the definition, you'd be surprised what it means. If you are the weaker vessel, if I set a glass vase up here, just set it right here on the edge, am I being a good steward of it? Why? Hmm? It's very fragile, and it's not a safe place. If somebody just walks past it, it'll probably fall and break, right? You have to think of your body in that aspect. You have to think of your body in that aspect and the body of the developing child in your womb. Because our bodies, yes, it is the weaker vessel Physically, it is the weaker vessel. You have to understand this. You cannot do what you see your master do. It's proven. It's proven in every area and every aspect of your life. Your body is delicate. If your body's delicate, that means the balance that is in is delicate. 
one wrong decision will throw off your hormonal balance. It will throw off your whole body's balance, okay? And so this is what I want to say about that. All imbalance starts with what you put in your mouth, okay? It starts with what you put in your mouth, meaning food, drink, the air, everything. It all starts there. So if you're eating based off of how you want to eat, if you're drinking based off of how you want to drink, nine times out of ten, you're completely out of balance, okay? If you start off imbalanced, guess what? If you lack in discipline, you're going to finish imbalance, and that's not good. Take this serious because this is just as your walk with Christ. If you start off wrong, you're going to finish wrong with a lack of discipline. Some of us didn't grow up in homes where we were taught to be disciplined. That's fine. A lot of us have grown up in faulty foundations. But the Most High has given us the ability to tear down the faulty foundations and reconstruct them and rebuild them. But what we have to do is make the decision to choose to do so. Okay? You can't, you're not going to pray, Father, make my foundation great and make me do all of this and do all of that. I'm going to tell you right now that you're praying amiss because the Father is giving you the blueprint. He's already telling you what to do. Now you have to get up, take it, and apply it, okay? You can't say, Father, take all this weight off of me. No, you got to do it, right? So it's the same thing. Just because we lack knowledge in those areas does not mean that we have to finish that way. But it's a mindset. You have to decide to do that. And how you decide to do that is by obtaining the knowledge and the wisdom and the understanding. And guess what? Where are you going to get it from? You're going to get it from your shepherd according to what the word says, right? And then you're also going to get it from the women as far as this, how this goes with the pregnancy, with conceiving, laboring, and delivering. You're going to get it from the daughters and the sisters that the Most High has put this wisdom and understanding in. And they're willing to teach you. They're willing to help you. But you're going to get it through obedience. Okay? Sister Erica and I and Sister Carolina and every other sister that, you know, is blessed with this opportunity to be a help to you all, we are willing. We are willing. But we need daughters who are willing to be obedient. We need sisters who are willing to be obedient. All of the understanding and the knowledge and the wisdom that we have is not for ourselves. The Father has blessed us with it, and we gladly are giving it away, okay? I don't want anybody to feel like um, you're less than or you're afraid to ask for help. When you're afraid to ask for help, that's how we end up in complications, okay? So be obedient and ask for help. <laughs> um, Lina? You want to go ahead and come up, and we'll just feed off of each other. If you say something that, you know, because like I said, I do have things down here. Oh, really, really quick, before you talk about obedience, just stay right here. Um, let me hit these really quick points. No, I want you to stay here. No, 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 no. I want you to stay here because I want you to be able to look at it too. So um, I already said that we can change the imbalances. The mother's health is passed down. Do y'all know that? With every seed that is in your womb, your health is passed down. They're not going to get their father's health. They're going to get majority percent of your health. So that's important. Your health is passed down. If you have poor gut, your, your child, nine times out of ten, will have a poor gut. Like I said, if you're lacking discipline on correcting these things, that's what's going to happen. Mother's DNA, both types. You have your mitochondrial DNA, and then you have the DNA that your children get from both parents. That passes down to your children. But the mother's DNA goes to both son and daughter. This is vitally crucial for y'all to get because if you are eating a certain way that is not healthy, that is not going to help you, it's passing down to your children. 
Like Erica said, she got her blood pricked. If that doctor was to take her blood, not just look at the cells, but take her blood and look at the mitochondrial DNA, he would get information all the way far back, generations upon generations, of how her great mother times a thousand was in her health. That's how crucial this is. Women, you can't make up for, like I said, the foundations that we came on, but you can start fixing it so that way the mitochondrial DNA reads differently and reads stronger in your generations that are going to come from between your legs, okay? Um, the father's DNA is passed down as well. I'm going to hit a little bit on the father's because the world hasn't really taught us that the father's health is just as important as the woman's health. Men have cycles just as women have cycles. No one's ever taught them these things, though. So hopefully over this dead season, Pastor and I will be putting out videos specifically speaking to the men's health and how they contribute to whether or not the babies or the children that are within your womb are developing properly. Um, I'll say something about that. I know a lot of sisters have suffered from miscarriages. You're not alone. I'm pretty sure every, every woman has experienced a miscarriage before. But the world has put a connotation that it's solely the mom's fault, and it's not. I want you all to understand the reason I'm going to be talking about the males and the men's health is because they contribute so much to whether or not you will carry a child or if you will lose a child, okay? Because the DNA is in the sperm. This is why you not only need to be disciplined and serious about your health, you need to be disciplined and serious about your master's health. Now, you can offer the information and treat your husband and treat him. I entreat pastor all the time. He still gets to make, make his own decisions. But once they understand and have the knowledge about how crucial their role is and also conception, then they'll be able to start seeing, okay, I don't need to do that. I do need to do this. You can look at my children. Pastor is a personal trainer. And so he already had a knowledge base of eating properly, making sure he works out, you know, making sure he's getting adequate amounts of sleep, making sure he's getting adequate amounts of um, hydration in his body. Um, but he did not understand as far as how crucial his role was in actually the development of each seed that we've had. And so once he's got that down, now he's like, oh, okay, I got this now. And he pays specific attention and care to his body, especially during these times where we're, we're rearing and raising children. So that's something we will talk about. But I really want Carolina to talk about the seriousness of um, how the disobedience, if that is the path that you choose, will dramatically affect your outcome um, during pregnancy, labor, and delivery. And we'll just kind of feed off of each other. Because okay. um, I do have notes, but I want them Bless y'all. It don't matter. You can have a seat if you want, brother, right here in this chair. Hallelujah. All right, y'all. So I've been asked to speak about obedience. And um, again, it just pops out of nowhere. So I don't have really anything written down. But we claim to be Israel, right? And when it comes to us claiming to be Israel and we're sitting, we're reading the word and everything. And it gives us so many examples of how they all will submit to Yahweh before they go into war, before they did anything. You know, it's the, it's, you have to have that knowing of who you are to Yah and what Yah is to you, that anything you face, you know, it'll, you'll, you'll walk in that automatic obedience that makes you authentically his child. It's going to show in everything that you do. And obedience, like how she was saying, it starts with your relationship with Yahweh, men and women. Does it look a little different? Yes, it does, because the roles are different. Okay? And so we got to be at peace with that. Um, let me see. My thoughts are kind of leaving me a little bit. Uh, as far as, um, for example, like how she said, Yahweh set sisters into your path to be your midwives or to just be a doula or however. Um, and then, of course, 
a lot of you have masters who are over you, you'll want to start with your master first. You know, he may not be all the way qualified to understand what it is to be pregnant and all of that there, but if you don't learn to communicate with your master first, you're already dropping the ball as a woman. Like I have to talk to husbands and wives a lot to, to help them get sort of on the same page as to what communication even looks like. And it can be uncomfortable. And it may, the enemy may be telling you that you are um, complaining or that you're bringing this up too much or you're giving this too much power. That's what, they're, that's what he's gonna say or that's what she's gonna say. It doesn't matter, you have to get to a place where it's like, no, I wanna make this known so that I can get directed correctly, you know, instructed correctly on what to or how to go about it. And so you start with your master first so that he can clean up anything that is being dealt with emotionally, get you back to thinking logically. Okay, what you been doing? Okay, so you didn't drink no water today. Didn't I tell you to drink two cups of water this morning? You know, things like that, it's real simple. So obedience really starts with the really small little things, and that's really just those who are married. It starts with your master first. And I'm pretty sure he probably said something that day was just like, you make sure you eat your vegetables today, or did you take your vitamins? It really starts that small. You know, and then if you're doing all the things that you're supposed to be doing and you've been following his instructions and this thing is just still nudging at you, just still nudging at you, then you make it again known. Sir, is there anybody you get in your spirit that I can speak to? Can I speak to Gabby or can I speak to Erica, Jeanette, myself, Carolina? You know, can I just reach out to somebody, Mother Chris? You know, can I, re you know, just to, just to see what this is. I might need deliverance or something. And then he hears you out, you know, and you'll have a greater peace if he says, yeah, go ahead and reach out to this one right here. See what it is, bring it back to me, and then we'll, you know, we'll suffer through it and go like that. It's just these little small steps that make a big difference. And it's like how she was speaking about the foundation. We all start off a little rocky, you know, but in order to, I'm a gardener. I do a lot of the garden work here. I do a lot of the tilling of the ground. You know, so this goes hand in hand for me. When I'm delivering babies, when I'm dealing with life and life, that's all that's been given. I deal with a lot of life, keeping plants alive, keeping the soil good to feed the plants. You know, all of that goes hand in hand for me. So when, when you're doing, this is what your master's gonna be doing. He's that husbandman that, that tills that, those rocks out of your words and the broken glass and the plastic and all that stuff gets renewed when you bring it to him. That's why you, got, you need him to do that groundwork with you to get you to where who's gonna feed you, the nitrogen, the sulfate, the, you get it? Are you understanding like what I'm saying here? Okay, and so, and then they send you to like a Gabby and a Erica. Like I don't know all the food stuff like Erica do. Thank you, Erica. Hallelujah, a good team right here, you know? So yes, please go to Erica, she'll teach you how to eat. Please go to Gabby, she'll teach you how to pray and fight, you know, really hard, you know? Like it's like, and teach you how to eat all at the same time. You know, so you, there's your nitrogen, there's your potassium. I'll be your sodium and somewhat your calcium if you need me to, you know? So, and, and now you're kind of seeing my mind. So that's why it's important to start with the husband man, let him do the groundwork and you communicate. You, men cannot read our minds, y'all. Like they can't read our minds. You can make a face, that face can mean 20 things to him. He's like, well, is she hungry? Does she need her diaper changed? Like, what does she need? I don't know what she needs. She ain't telling me nothing. She just said this, but then she said that. You know, she's, it's, you, you get it? So it's really just, Go to your husband, get that, get that, start getting that established. No matter how silly it sounds, again, if you're facing it again and it's still nudging at you, bring that issue up again and ask if you can speak to someone that is well equipped, like nitrogen, you know. And then, um, and then from there, you know, it'll it'll start setting you on the right path to get that right soil, get that right mindset, get all of that, get going and set right. And so these, this is how I see obedience. It's very, 
small. And I just wanted to read something to y'all real quick. So in 1 Samuel 15, 22, it says, but Samuel replied, what is it more, what is more pleasing to the Most High, your burnt offerings and sacrifice or your obedience to his voice, right? Listen, obedience is better than sacrifice and submission is better than offerings to the fat of lambs. It's his voice, his voice, you know, because his, his voice is also within you. And that little thing that keeps nudging you, like, and, and it's saying, you know what, just get that, get, see if you can get an answer for that. That's his voice. When your husband says, all right, honey, we going to go to your husband about it. That's his voice. When your husband says, okay, what's going on? And you tell him, all right, let's throw this away, but let's take care of this. You, you go to Gabby about this right here. This is what's standing out to me the most. That's his voice. You know, and then and just learning how to obey him in that in that in that small moment, it's gonna make a big deal later on. I've seen a lot of success as far as who I deal with here. Because I deal on land and off land. Sometimes I'm doing six births at one time, labels, you know, and things like that. And I'm grateful to the most high because he simplified it for me because I am that simple child that he got. You know, I'm very special. <laughs> I'm okay with that. You know, so he keeps it very simple for me. But I see the success of, of just these little small things. And I, I get on our midwives list too, and I talk to all of us, and just to keep all of us balanced and in good health standing. And they got strong heads, and we always communicate and making sure that we're just staying, you know, right for you all, and so that we're ready for whatever y'all bring as well and are able to share our growth in obedience and be that example too. Obedience is so important. Listen, listen to him because you have a relationship with the father. You are the children of Israel. And if you claim that, don't do nothing without him. Don't do nothing without him. Our minds are wild. They are. There are many roads, many. And we like to live in our subconscious. And that's what we speak from, the thing that's way back here. And ain't nobody there but you. That's it, just you. And we gotta dig in deep and discern what's going on and get y'all to speak to us about it or speak to your masters about it, you know? So I, I pray this is making sense. Yes, Gabby? Okay, nitrogen. And potassium. So I'll give the mic to Gabby now. I can't think of anything else at this moment. If you think of something else, you're going you to come to me. Yes, ma'am. <laughs> okay, so while she was talking about all the vitamins and nutrients, I want to show y'all, this is what I take. Hey, Lina, pass this around so everybody can see. It's called TEND, TEND prenatal. Because I don't take prenatals. I'm not saying y'all don't have to. I'm saying me. I don't take prenatals. Um, because I eat the way what Sister Erica's PowerPoint did, I don't have to take prenatals. Um, because I eat a whole food, raw food, nutrient-dense um, way, my food has become my prenatal. And I want everybody to start thinking like that. Your food is your prenatal, so that you don't have to supplement. The thing is, we weren't designed to supplement. You understand? You have a supernatural father, and you're a supernatural daughter, and he's made supernatural food for you. But you got to want to eat it. If you like greasy cheeseburgers, I'm just using it as an example. You're probably not gonna get all the nutrients that you need out of that greasy, juicy cheeseburger. I used to like greasy cheeseburgers. I did, it's true. I, even though I'm plant-based for several years now, I remember eating those and they were very delicious to my palate. But when you start eating the foods that your body requires, your palate changes. So what may be nasty to you right now will be delectably delicious 
later on, okay? Pre-pregnancy, nutrition is vital. I have on here, studies show poor nutrition before and during pregnancy causes harm, not tomorrow, but in the next generation. You see how crucial this is? This is pre-baby, pre-baby, the next generation. Okay? More people, more people, is that better? It's like making that, mm, do y'all hear that? Okay. More people are starting to catch on now that it does matter what you eat before being pregnant and while being pregnant. More people are starting to catch on to that now. In fact, that now they start doing research and studies on seeing because they end up finding out that there were no studies. There was no research showing that this is even important. So that lets you know something. That should really let you know that how our mothers and our fathers pregnancies had been back then. The way you eat determines the development of your child's teeth. If you notice, when, if you've already had a baby before, when they start getting their teeth in, they look perfect, right? You know why they look perfect? Because Yah has made your body to produce a perfect food for them. Have you noticed how your children's teeth look after they're done nursing? when they fall out and they come in? If they look perfect, hallelujah, that means you're doing something right. If they don't, if you have teeth that are collapsing or they're growing too close together or their wisdom teeth hurt when they're growing in, that is direct indications of the poor health or the poor nutrition that you had while you were nursing them or feeding them thereafter. While you're pregnant, I want to hit on this. Because not a lot of people know this, and my sister loves me very, very much, and she doesn't mind me sharing this, okay? Some of us does, don't know that you don't have to gain more than what Sister Erica had on this screen. 30 pounds is the only amount that is needed. Y'all hear me? So if you're gaining 35 pounds, you gain too much. Don't gain that extra five. Only if you are under, what is it? If you are malnourished, you should need to gain more. I was malnourished when I was ill. So I had to gain 50 plus pounds to be able to build my body back up and also provide what was necessary for the baby to, pro to develop properly. It's not necessary for us to just gain tons and tons of weight, okay? Because now that's unhealthy for you and that's unhealthy for baby. When you're gaining an excess of weight, this is how you set yourself in a position to develop gestational diabetes, to develop preeclampsia or high blood pressure, high blood pressure, okay? It's not, you don't have to gain it. The world will tell you when you're pregnant, you get to eat, 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 eat all you want. That is not accurate. You need to make sure it's nutrient dense. So first thing, this is your first thing that you have to be obedient in. I want y'all to get Sister Erica's PowerPoint notes, and I want y'all to have that on hand so that you can see exactly how it is that you need to structure your meal plan. You only hear about meal plans when people are wanting to lose weight or do something to their bodies. But we really need to pay attention to that as far as growing the seeds within our womb. Do you have a meal plan? I do. My meal plan is the same. I eat so that it's gonna be beneficial to my body. When you conceive, your brain's not gonna tell you, okay, this is what you need to eat. You need to do this and you need to do that. No, it's not gonna do that. What's actually gonna happen is baby is gonna pull from you whatever it needs and it's not gonna tell you about it. You're going to know what's happening to you if things start breaking down, certain pains, aches, not feeling well, nausea. A lot of that stuff happens because of the lack of vital minerals and the lack of nutrients that we 
we don't have in our bodies. It's possible to have a pregnancy and not be vomiting. I don't. I don't vomit. If I vomit, I know something's wrong. Okay? It's possible to have a pregnancy and not feel nauseous. It is. A lot of us are nauseous because we're dehydrated. If you stayed hydrated, you wouldn't be nauseous for some cases. So when a sister you know, comes to me and says, hey, Sister Gabby, I'm nauseous all the time. What can I do about my nausea? Are you hydrated? It's very crucial. Did y'all see the slide about water? Did you just see the part that it plays? You need water in every process of your body, okay? All of these vitamins, all of these minerals, they work together. So like Sister Erica stated, you can't just go wild on vitamin A, vitamin A. Well, guess what? If you're low in vitamin A, you also need another vitamin or another mineral that will help synthesize vitamin A. This is why if you're going to get supplements, you really have to understand what you're doing. That's why I'm, I don't recommend su supplements because I know everybody's not going to do the same amount of work that I do, that Sister Erica does, that Sister Carolina does, Sister Jeanette does. Everyone's not going to do that. So the thing that I recommend is eating clean, whole foods because your body knows how to synthesize and break things down. Y'all made it perfect. All we have to do is feed it the right thing so that none of its processes are interrupted or they start shutting down when they shouldn't. Um, did everybody see that? Uh, the prenatal bar? Okay. So 10 prenatal. You can go on their website. They have different flavors. Um, hmm. You're going to take a picture of it? Okay. And can you up, like, up, add that to your slide, too? So that, okay, so she's going to add it to her slide so that y'all can see it. But all of the percentages that she had on her slide, on the back of that, it's either added or it far exceeds it. And it tastes good. It doesn't taste like powder. You can pick your own um, flavor. There's four different flavors. But I just eat it just as an addition. I eat it as an addition. I do smoothies in the morning. So for some of us who it may seem like, oh my gosh, this is too much. How do I do this? Simplify it. It's very simple. You can get more calories, more nutrients in a smoothie instead of sitting down at a table and thinking you're about to eat all of this, you know, five bowls of kale, which I do. I eat a lot of kale. Every morning I have kale for breakfast. I love kale. So I'm getting the what's necessary for me to have during pregnancy, before pregnancy, and postpartum. Um, I put kale in my smoothies. I have sauteed kale. I put kale in my salad. I'm literally eating kale all day long. On top of that, I do have uh, chlorophyll. Uh, is it in my bag? I think it's in my bag. Unless I took it out. Nope, it's in here. So this, I guess this would, this is not really a supplement. <laughs> y'all know y'all can make this. Um, this is the chlorophyll that I have, and it's concentrate, chloroxygen. Now, all chlorophylls are not the same. I've tried a lot of them, and this is the best one to me. Because I can listen to my body, I understand it. The immediate, I took maybe a one dropper full to test it and see how it would do, and immediately, within two minutes of taking this, I felt oxygen flowing through my veins immediately. Now, if you don't, if you're not familiar with um, listening to your body, sis, can you turn that up? Yeah, take a picture and you can add that on there just in case y'all are interested in getting the chlorophyll. Um, if you're not familiar with your body, you may not notice it. But I, I'm very familiar with mine, so I notice things immediately, like, I can't drink regular water. If I go to the grocery store and I get, um, what's that bottle of water? Um, Walmart's bottle of water. What's the name of Walmart's bottle of water? Great value. You know, some people just get the great value bottles of water. If I drink a sip of that water, I instantly get a headache. Instantly. Other people, they drink it and it's like regular water to them. But because I have stripped my body of a lot of the processed foods that we were raised on, the, you know, 
the the eating lifestyle I had prior, I've stripped all of those things out of me. Heavy metals, toxins, parasites. Now when I drink things that I used to drink or I eat, if I go back and eat something I used to eat, I can immediately feel, feel the effects of it on my body. Okay? So you guys may not feel it, but that doesn't mean that something's not happening. Okay? Um, it's 11.53. Do you want to take questions? Hopefully y'all ask a question. I want to, let me get y'all this so y'all can share with y'all masters. Research adds to a growing body of evidence that suggests sperm health dictates the health of a pregnancy. For instance, previous research suggests sperm has an important role in the formation of the placenta, which is crucial for oxygen and nutrient supply to the fetus. If your placenta is not functioning properly, your baby, your child doesn't live, okay? Sperm health determines that. So you gotta be concerned about your master's body. Your body, even though you don't understand it, your body speaks to your husband's body. Your husband's body speaks to your body. If your husband's sperm quality is not good, your body will reject it. Without you having to say, hey, body, you know, that, that sperm, he didn't eat right the other day. You don't have to do that. Your body's just going to be like, mm, mm You know why your body does that? Because your body was created by the most high to only receive what is good and perfect. And if it's not perfect seed coming, your body will shut down to where it won't receive it. But what the world has done is it has created all of these supplements, all of these vitamins, well, I don't even gonna call it vitamin, all these synthetic drugs, to make your husband's body ready to perform. And if it performs and it's not in a healthy state, what comes out is poor quality seed. You don't want to raise poor quality seed, right? Your body communicates with his body. His body communicates with your body. Your body communicates the same thing to his. It will tell him whether the cervical mucus is healthy. So a lot of times women are not getting pregnant because your bodies are communicating with each other and is saying it's not yet time. Either the sperm is not healthy or the womb is not healthy. So don't allow the enemy to play tricks on your mind thinking that something's wrong with you or something's wrong with your husband and y'all just not going, no. Our bodies are made a certain way. We have to pay attention to our bodies, okay? So I wanted to definitely say that. Any questions? Okay. And like I said, Pastor and I are going to do a video where we go in depth on the, the men's health and the sperm quality because it's, it's very important. You want to talk? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anybody have a question? Just sis? Okay. Y'all, my question was when it comes to the food, some of the things you listed were fresh, like mm -hmm. fruits and things. What is the second best option other than fresh? Because I would usually buy things in bulk and seasonally and then try to store it up to use for throughout the year. What's the second best option? Okay, so the second best option, if you can get a hold of it now, is freeze dried foods. Freeze dried foods is second best, third best would be frozen. That's it. I wouldn't say canned food is next because it's really not the best. Dried foods is fine. But freeze-dried is better because less nutrients have been destroyed in the process. With the canned foods, everything's been destroyed. Your enzymes, you need enzymes to properly break down, digest, and disseminate through the system. So freeze dry and fresh raw foods, if you can get a hold of it. It's the oven. Oh. 
God bless y'all. Thank you so much for this. Um, I have a question that's kind of for both you and Sister Erica. Mm -hmm. She mentioned, like, the app, and you put stuff in to see, like, the values. Mm -hmm. So, say, on the extreme side is someone who's completely switching their diet. We know that, like, a detox could possibly happen or a cleansing when you're starting to put the new food in. Mm -hmm. So, how can you really tell what you actually need? Like, okay, I got 100% of everything. Like, can you kind of explain some examples of what could happen if you're, like, lacking magnesium or if you need iron instead of having to go get a whole blood plant panel done? Or can you just explain some things that would help you understand what you actually do need? Um, so if you're lacking iron, everybody should know this one. If you're lacking iron, um, you're cold. You are still hungry. A lot of these uh, vitamins and minerals that you lack will cause hunger. Because if you remember what Sister Erica said, it's about satiation. Mm -hmm. Your body is hungry and it's telling you to eat because it's expecting you to give it what it's lacking. So it could, during pregnancy, you're going to have kind of the same symptoms. Mm -hmm. Some symptoms you might have if you're lacking selenium and you're lacking um, what vitamin what vitamin you said, vitamin A for the hair, You'll, your hair will fall out. Yeah, How many of y'all know that falling out, hair falling out after postpartum is not normal? Mm -hmm. You should not be getting bald spots. Mm -hmm. If it's happening, it's letting you know what you're, that's the mineral that you're lacking in. You should be in total perfection after having baby. The only thing that your body should be working on is repair. Mm -hmm. Amen. Repair. That's it. So like the iron, your blood will bleed. Like you'll notice you're bleeding longer. If you're lacking vitamin C, your gums, everything will bleed. Some women actually when they're brushing their teeth don't have gums that bleed. If you have gums that bleed, that's letting you know that your vitamin C is low. Mm -hmm. Your immune system is low. Mm -hmm. So those are just some examples. Mm -hmm. But let me, that you said that I do have a note on here telling you exactly um, which Erica went into as well. Let me double answer that for this too. Let me go to Okay. So vitamin B maintains your skin, your nerves, your muscle, and your brain function. If you notice that you forgetting things, brain fog. I forgot my social security number one pregnancy and I started crying in the doctor's office. Like she was like, I need to identify you by your social. I said, okay, yeah, I know that. <laughs> and I started crying. Cause now I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't get seen. <laughs> and I really don't know my social. And she was like, no, that's normal. That's a normal pregnancy symptom. That is not normal, y'all. You shouldn't forget things like that. So guess what was lacking? My vitamin B complex was low. So you'll have symptoms like that where things you normally do, all of a sudden it's hard for you to do. If you're normally good at focusing, okay, what am I lacking? What is my brain not getting? Because I can't focus. I'm all over the place. Mm -hmm. If you're normally just like you can tell when you're dehydrated, your mouth is dry. You're not going to be like, oh, darn, I need to go. No, you're dehydrated because your mouth is dry. Your skin is cracking. Your lips are cracking. So it's the same. It's, they're going to have the same symptoms. So I want you all to know that what the doctors are telling you is normal pregnancy symptoms is not normal. That's just what society has taught us. Um, there are some dosage levels, suggested dosage. Vitamin A you should be getting at least 5,000 IUs of vitamin A. Vitamin B complex, 100 milligrams. Vitamin B, what is that, B6, 50 milligrams. B15, 2,000 MCGs. Vitamin C, between 3,000 and 6,000. Now, I do not recommend anybody taking vitamin C powders early on in pregnancy. I recommend you getting it from your food because vitamin C can also cause you to miscarry, okay? 
Get it through your foods. Juicing is really good. We juice. We get a lot of stuff through juicing. Okay? Did that answer your question, sis? And then if I may say a little bit yes. about the um, the chronometer or the food apps. So no matter, like I said, no matter what diet you're on or even if you don't know what you may deficient in or not deficient in, we all have the need of the same vitamins and minerals. So you still need the vitamin A, the vitamin C, the vitamin D, the protein, the fats. And so what the app will do is when you put in what you ate, it'll show you um, if you're meeting those daily values. And then if you um, maybe meet, and then the more you stay on top of it and stay consistent with it, you'll eventually make all your, um, you'll no longer be deficient just by consuming them on a daily, on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. I agree. Um, but just to add to Erica and Gabby, um, the hope is that you're getting it from your foods more than anything so that your supplements, you don't have to take too, too much of those. You'll still sort of need it, but not to the extreme to where you're, you know, it should just be an add-on. Right. Right. Right, you're just mm -hmm. adding it on, that's it. Instead of, uh, there, I've ran into women where they're taking five of them, 10 of them, and I'm like, no, 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 no. You should be getting it more from your food and be taking like one, two, you know, things like that. Um, and then the other thing, when it comes up to iron and you're deficient in iron, checking under the eyelids, and if they're completely white, then you're very low in your iron. And it's good to start with your, your black strap molasses, uh, female. If you have other yeah. stuff. Yeah, I think. There you go. So, you know, but that's one way, Alex, to check, too. And, of course, of course being cold and all of these kind of things, too. Yeah. Real quick, even with some of those, um, like, for example, sea moss and bladder rat, some sisters have to be careful because one sister was taking it and it was too much iodine for her and it was messing with her thyroid. So even be careful with su supplementing with some of the things like that as well. Yeah, so for me, I'm a blood I'm a blood type O, so I have high iron. I don't need a lot of things to take in. But then there are others that are a little bit different and that their, their um, iron is very, very low. So remember that all of you are different. And so it's really good to communicate this with your midwives and your doulas and things like that so that they can better instruct you. And if you do end up getting checked like Erica, that's, that's good, too, because it kind of sets you on a really good foundation, if that makes sense. So, bless y'all. This may have already been covered, but just to ask more specifically, um, I know a lot of supplements, as you said, are synthetic. Mm -hmm. So what if you're actually getting a raw prenatal and you're checking behind that vitamin C that it's not ascorbic acid, that it's actually derived from the fruit? Um, is that okay to take that once a day and still, you know, do this balanced diet and not get in too much? Just the, the uh, overall prenatal. Yes. Did y'all hear her question? Yes, it's fine. It's just not, don't take two of them. Don't take three of them. Because they've made it specifically designed for the amount that you need yes. as a pregnant mom. Okay. Your body's automatically going to kick out what it doesn't need. That's why we okay. urinate. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it's fine. Your body's going to do all the synthesizing. The issue is when we go buy just vitamin A, and then we take multiple pills of vitamin A. Now your body is fighting, trying to synthesize and get rid of it. And so some people, I know one time when I was in college, I took niacin because I wanted my hair to grow back. I had chopped all my hair off, y'all. And I took niacin because I wanted my hair to grow back. Well, I took too much niacin and I had a flush. What are they called? Flushes, right? where I just kept having moments of intense heat and on my face, feeling like fire. It was because I took too much niacin and my body was trying to kick it out as fast as it could. And it was not, it wasn't coming out as fast as it could. Your body's been designed to only absorb a certain amount. Same with drinking water. If you drink eight ounces of water in, if you drink 16 ounces of water in an hour, 
all that water you just drank, you're about to urinate. That's why you go back and forth. Because your body can only absorb four ounces. I think it's what, four ounces every 30, every 30 minutes. So if you're drinking more than what your body can absorb and actually disseminate through the rest of your body, it's going to flush it out. And that's just with water. So imagine what it's going to do with all of the supplements that you're putting in there. So don't tire yourself out trying to take all this extra stuff. And your body's not going to do anything but kick it right back out. So you're wasting money if you paid for it. And you're wasting time and energy if, if you're someone who puts scheduled times when you need to take this and take that. Okay? Did that answer? Um, if there's no more questions, or even if there is, I just have, oh, okay, I just want to say one thing real quick to cravings. I know Gabby mentioned it a little bit as well, but when you start eating more clean, I should say, or just like real food, and you stop eating all the junk, you notice your cravings will change. You will no longer crave the bad stuff that you once ate. Um, my, from my own testimony, I, I've been eating very well, very nutritious, cutting out a lot of things that, you know, weren't doing me well. And when I came to the feast, I said, oh, I'll, I'll, I'll do a little bit here and there, you know, because of the feast. But, you know, I, when I was presented with the option to eat it, the, the cake or the dessert, whatever, I didn't even want it. I looked at it, and I had no desire for it. The cravings, the, mm, let me eat it because it tastes good, wasn't even there. Like, I actually did not want it. It wasn't appealing to me. So your, your, your makeup, what you desire, what you want will actually change when you, when you eat well. Okay, thank you so much for y'all sharing y'all testimonies and just giving us the wisdom and the information. Um, I actually had two questions. Um, the first is when you mentioned, Sister Erica, about I think it was in the proteins as far as the cup of milk and the amount of grams. Is there, I guess, is, is there a milk type? Like, you know, you will have your almond milk, your oat milk, your goat milk, but is there a milk type that provides more grams or... or are they all related to be the same? Yes. Um, so cow's milk and goat's milk, they do differ. So one has more, goat milk has more potassium. One has more fat than the other. One has more protein than the other. I think milk, um, cow's milk may have more fat, but goat milk may have more protein. I believe that's what it is, but you can look it up as well. But they do differ. Um, one thing I do want to say is to be careful with all the store-bought um, alternative milks because you'll have oat milk and almond milk, but they'll have sunflower oil and gergum and sugar and all this extra stuff. So if you are going to abstain from um, uh, animal-based milks and you want to do like an almond milk, oat milk, the better thing to do is to make it at home because the ones out there is you're poisoning your body. So <laughs> it's, it's, no, it's not worth it. <laughs> okay, thank you. And if I may ask my last question, I know we were just talking about water and also talking about um, the supplements that we take should be add-on, but I wanted to ask, is there a possibility that just drinking plain water could be depleted, like it's not hydrating enough? Um, just Yes. The water supply that's, if you don't have a spring outside, nine times out of ten, <laughs> the water that you're drinking is not what's best. Um, spring water, you can buy it, though. There are different varieties of spring water to buy. Um, we've bought, we actually get the crystal geyser because I've tested it. You know, I've done the alkaline test on it, um, and it's actually clean. It's alkaline for you. Um, we also have a Kangen machine. Have you heard that before? So we drink, that's the water we drink at home. But when we're traveling, we don't have one to take with us we'll get the crystal geyser water. Um, just drinking regular tap water, because they're stripping it through um, the chlorine that they're putting in there, the fluoride that they're putting in there, um, the, what is it called, reverse osmosis, all of that takes away from the natural vitamins and minerals or minerals that are in the water. So it does play a part on what type of water that you're drinking, because you can drink water all day long and still feel dehydrated. If you don't have sodium and potassium, you're going to feel dehydrated because you need both of those to hydrate you, okay? Sodium, potassium, make sure that your cells are working properly, that the right amount of water is coming in and the right amount of waste is exiting. 
So just drinking water and it doesn't, and you're not sure if there's any minerals in there at all, you're going to be almost like wasting your time drinking it. So go ahead. Hallelujah. Shalom. Okay, so the next class is here. So we're going to um, wrap this class up. Uh, we went just a few minutes over, but the questions were wonderful. They were really good questions. Um, if you have any more questions, um, would you still be here for any questions after the, afterwards? You got to go. <laughs> yes. Un until her master comes, she's available. I'll be here for a few minutes um, if my children are situated. If not, we can exchange um, information, numbers, emails, Marco Polos, et cetera, and we can talk more after the fact. But I pray this was an, um, better, beneficial and edifying for everyone. Bless y'all.